So you want to start a side hustle and either you follow me already and you like my content and think, hey, Sarah gives lots of great tips about motherhood, time management, productivity, that kind of thing. So let's see what she has to say about side hustles. Or you are new to my channel or new to my podcast and thought, hey, I want to learn more about starting a side hustle. I've been thinking about doing that or I've heard a lot of people doing that and I want to learn more. This may not be exactly the information you want to hear, but this will be the information you need to hear when it comes to starting a side hustle. So let's get into it. Glue. It's messy. It's sticky. It gets everywhere, but it's also really useful. Just like the glue that we need to put together the pieces of our life as busy working moms. We have after school activities. We have homework. We have cleaning. We have laundry. And, you know, we want to spend time with our kids as well in the process and maybe even have some time for ourselves. This podcast is for the busy moms out there who are balancing work, life, and everything in between. And we all know that in between encompasses a lot of things. If you're a mom who wants to do the best in all areas of life, but still have time for yourself, this podcast is for you. I love to interview other moms and find out what works for them, get ideas from them, get inspired by them, and learn, you know, we're all in this together. But I also like to share my own tips, tricks, struggles, triumphs, and share it all with you. So grab a load of laundry, lock yourself in the bathroom, go for a walk, do whatever you got to do. But I am just so glad you're here. Hey, glue sticks. Welcome to the Work Life Glue podcast. If you are new here, my name is Sarah. I am the mom to three very energetic little girls, ages six, three and a half, and seven months. I am the wife to a busy chef named San, and I am a teacher turned nanny turned daycare provider. And I started this side hustle of Work Life Glue six years ago almost when I was running a daycare 50 hours plus a week. I was open 50 hours, but I was doing a lot more work outside of that. And I started this as a side hustle and it has grown to not replace my income, but it is now basically my main job. Um, And I'm working toward that still. It definitely is a decent income for me, but it's a lot more than that. I do it for a lot more reasons than just income, or I wouldn't still be doing it six years later. But a lot of you guys always comment, those of you in my audience comment on how do you do it all? And how do you start a side hustle? And I want to start this and you want more tips on that. And so I actually had something completely different planned for this week, but literally like 15 minutes ago, I just had this overwhelming urge that I need to share. So you want to start a side hustle. That was just the thought that came into my head. And I came up with quite a few do's and don'ts when it comes to starting a side hustle. Like I said, in the intro of this podcast slash video, you might be watching this on YouTube. Hi, if you are, you can see me or you might be listening on the podcast app. Hi, you can't see me, but you can hear my voice, but you can watch or listen. Either way, you're getting the same content. I just have it on both platforms since I am very active on YouTube so that my audience over there doesn't miss any of the podcast episodes. Anyway, so I had this overwhelming urge that I needed to share this with you guys because I think there's so much out there of people putting out information that you might want to hear, but we need more information, especially for us busy moms wanting to start a side hustle, information that you need to hear. Something from someone who's been doing this on the side. Um, I still watch a little boy three days a week, and so I still, it's kind of on the side, and it's on the side of motherhood. Maybe you're a stay-at-home mom listening to this. Um, Maybe you're not even a mom, but that's my main audience. That's mainly who I'm going to be talking to just because that's really who this is targeting at. But if you're not a mom or a parent, you could definitely still get a lot out of this episode. So like I said, I'm going to have do's and don'ts when it comes to starting a side hustle. These are real life things. They may not be exactly what you want to hear. Maybe you want to hear that it's easy. Maybe you want to hear that you just need to do X, Y, or Z and it will happen. Um, I'm not going to sugarcoat things. That's one thing my audience knows, and that's something you should learn if you're new here, that I am very real, I'm very authentic, and I share the truth as much as I can without you know, sharing things for privacy reasons that I wouldn't share. So let's jump into it, my do's and don'ts when it comes to starting a side hustle, whatever it may be. Maybe it's an Etsy shop. Maybe it's a local business. Maybe it's an online magazine. Maybe it's a YouTube channel. Maybe it's an Instagram account that you want to do for money. Maybe you're going to sell soaps out of your house. Maybe you're like my husband and you want to start a cookie business on the side. So my husband also has a side hustle and he's a busy chef working tons of hours all the time. And he started a side hustle during the pandemic and 
it's still going and I'm really proud of him and we're seeing where that's taking him. But we know a lot about side hustles in our family. And so I thought it was high time I share some of my tips with you guys. And hopefully this will give you the real deal. I want to inspire, but I also want to be real about what it is like. So number one, do have a huge why when it comes to starting your side hustle. Do not start just because you want to make a ton of money. Do not start because you have found this trend that you think will take off and you don't really have any passion for it. You don't really know a lot about it, but it's trending right now. Now, I do think you could start a shop and sell trending items or things like that. But when you're thinking longevity, if you really want to be doing your side hustle long term and hopefully take it into a full time hustle, full time job, full time business, then you want to have some kind of why. Now, it doesn't have to be earth shattering, but it needs to be big enough that it will keep you going when you want to give up and you will want to give up. Trust me. So for me, my why has been wanting to connect with other moms, wanting to inspire other moms, wanting to give back to the community that has helped me so much. There's such a huge mom community, and I feel like I've gotten so much over the years from that, but I also want to give back, and I feel like I have my own unique message. I have my own life experiences that I could share, and I've always just really wanted to share that passion. Also, I just really love making videos. I really love sharing. I really love connecting with people, so that's also a huge why. It just fills me up, and I love doing it, so if you have a passion for creating something or Um, building something, online stuff, depending on what it is, that can definitely be part of your why just because you love doing it and you want to spread that around. Also, I have always had an entrepreneurial spirit and I really want to share that with the world, but I also want to leave a legacy for my daughters that they can set out for their dreams and make them come true. They don't need to get a job, work for the man, so to speak, um, That's there's nothing wrong with that, but I just really wanted to prove to myself and prove to them that they can do whatever they want. And as long as they work hard and have a big dream, they can go after it and crush it. And so that's a huge why for me that keeps me going. So definitely do have a huge why. Number two, do start right away taking action like right now after you listen to this podcast episode. Maybe you are creating your domain name. Maybe you are starting your Instagram shop. Maybe you are buying your doing business as on um, your state's website. Whatever it is, you need to start taking action. Don't get stuck in the research phase. Don't get stuck in the dreaming phase. I am a huge dreamer. I do this all the time. I'm constantly dreaming, but you don't want to get stuck there. If you get stuck there, that does nobody any good. And then you're feeling like you're failing, but you haven't even done anything to start. You need to start taking action. You're not going to have it all figured out. You're not going to know exactly what you're doing, but you need to start. The best way to learn is to do. I have learned so much just by doing that I would never have learned from researching. You need to start those little steps. And the more you start, the more momentum you get, the more action you do, the further along you'll be going and you'll have more momentum built up to keep you going and going and going and learning and doing and growing and experiencing and doing all the things. And that ball, once it's rolling, you'll find the path you need to find. Maybe it will head down a dead end and you'll have to back up and go a different direction. But you will never know that unless the ball is rolling. And right now, if you're just researching, your ball's just sitting there doing nothing. So get the ball rolling, start doing something right now. Literally, when this podcast is over, I want you to take at least one small action. Number three, do research real information, not vague information. So This podcast episode, even I would consider more vague information because it's not giving you specific information on your particular dream, your particular side hustle. I think it's great when you're first starting out to just listen to stuff to get a vague idea of some tips and tricks. But after this point, after you've done a few videos, a few podcast episodes, you need to start looking into real research, researching how do I get my business license, researching how Do I start an LLC? Starting networking with people, getting connections that you need to get, finding the building you're going to buy, those kinds of things. When you're just researching side hustles in general, while it can be inspiring, if you know what you want to do, at least 
somewhat, you need to start researching that. So if you know you want to start a podcast, start researching podcasting stuff. Don't start just learning about side hustles and being stuck in this la la land of dreaming. You need to start getting focused and really learn from people that are experienced in that field and not just side hustles in general. So I know I'm kind of bashing this own episode, which I think has its own purpose. But once you know what you want to do, you start need to start researching real things that will get you moving further and faster toward your side hustle goals. Number four, don't sit around waiting for signs. I of all people love signs. When I see a cardinal, I research what that means. I saw a hair in the shape of a circle, like a perfect circle in the shower the other day. And I thought it meant something. And so I was Googling, like, what does a circle mean? Like, I am a huge, symbolic, loving person. I was an English major, English teacher. I love metaphors and analogies and symbolism. But don't sit around waiting for a billboard to say, start your podcast or start that Etsy shop. It's not going to happen. At least probably not. Maybe this podcast is the sign you need that you need to stop looking for signs and you need to go get the ball rolling. Go get started. Don't wait around looking for signs. That's not going to happen. The sign is you have a dream in your heart that you need to be going after. That's all the sign you need. If it fills you up, if it makes your heart overflow, if it makes you a little anxious even, that's good. That is a sign you should be listening to, not these outside influences. Don't wait for your friend or spouse or mom or coworker to tell you it's the right thing to do or for God himself to come down and hit you over the head. The guiding force should be your heart and your gut. If your gut is telling you to do it, listen to that and stop waiting around for signs. Number five, this is a huge one. Do work on your mindset. I know that's a very buzz type word lately, but this has done wonders for me, not only in the side hustle realm, but also for my mental health as somebody who dealt with postpartum depression. I have a whole podcast episode on that. I will link in the description or the podcast notes, but your mindset is so important. It is so easy when you start something on the side, anything new, especially if you don't have people around you doing it, It is so easy to listen to the negativity, even if it's not there, even if it's just in your head. It's so easy to let that overtake you and to give up. So you need to like put a bulletproof vest on your mindset. And you can do that by reading really important books, by filling yourself up with motivating podcasts about mindset and about, you know, the power of your thoughts and really learning about how influential thoughts are and how they can either sabotage you or help you become successful. Some books I would really recommend to really get the to get this started for you are Surprise Surprise The Slight Edge by Jeff Olson. I've talked about this book a bazillion times and you're not going to stop hearing about it. If you haven't read it yet, this is a sign to go read it. Um, that book really just changed my life and changed my whole mindset about what it really takes to be successful and it's a lot less than you think, um, but you won't know that until you read the book. So go read the book. Also, Boundaries by Dr. John Townsend. I don't remember. I think that's the right name. Dr. Townsend. Um, It's a great book about setting up boundaries, which I'll talk about later in this episode about why they're so important. But you definitely want to learn about setting up boundaries within your mind, within your family, and things like that. I would also really recommend The Five Second Rule by Mel Robbins. It's a great audio book, especially to listen to. And then The Miracle Morning by Hal Elrod. It's not specifically a mindset book, but it will really help you wrap your mind around how to have a really good morning routine that will help you with your side hustle. But beyond that, anything about positive mindset, the power of positive thinking, um, any of those types of books are really good to help you really bulletproof your mind when it comes to negative thoughts, because they're just going to hold you back and they're just going to get in your way. And the more you can tune those out, the better. Number six, do have a plan for when you will work on your side hustle. If you are a busy mom, especially a working mom or just a mom in general, because we all know we don't have enough hours in the day, you need to have a plan right now before you get started of when you're going to actually work on this. It's so great to dream and think, oh, I could do this and I could do that and I could do the other thing. This person's doing it. This person's doing it. It'll be easy or I'll figure it out. No, you need to have a plan going into it. You don't need to know exactly when you can work on this. 
for me, it's 4 a.m. And that may be a harsh reality for you to learn that maybe that's when it's going to have to be a super early in the morning. If you can't do that, then maybe your why isn't big enough um, or you need to figure out something else that will work for you. But it may come with a cost. It probably will come with a cost. Maybe you're going to have to work when your kids are sleeping. Maybe you're going to have to hire somebody to watch your kids. Maybe you're going to have to do it during your commute on the bus. Maybe you're going to have to do it on the weekends. Um, You know, you're going to have to figure it out. Maybe you're going to sacrifice your Netflix time at night or cleaning time and work on your side hustle then. But you need to have time blocked off in your schedule to be productive, to really focus on it. You're not just going to magically find time, especially if you're a mom, especially if you're a working mom. You are already stretched very thin. Do I think it's possible? Of course, I've done it. Do I think it's worth it? Of course, if your why really matters and you are very passionate and it's going to make a difference in the world. But if you're already listening to this thinking, I don't want to give up any of those things, then you might as well turn off this podcast. I'm just being real. It's going to take sacrifice. It's going to be hard. You're going to get overwhelmed at times, but it's so much easier if you have time blocked off in the beginning, knowing exactly when you're going to start and when you're going to work on this. And I can't answer that for you because everybody's life is different, but take some time after this episode's done to really map out when could I work on this? What could I move around? That's what I had to do. And I realized I'm worthless to the world after 7 p.m. So I don't work on it stuff because I know it will never happen. I knew I could get up early and work on it then and get almost two hours of work done every single morning. But I do sacrifice my sleep and I do, you know, sacrifice sleeping in and time that I could be doing other fun stuff. I could stay up later and watch TV more and stuff like that. But I don't because the stream is so important to me. So Really look at your day and think about when you could fit it in right now. Don't wait until you've already bought the domain and all that to figure out when you're going to do it. You need to figure that out first. Number seven, don't start without your family on board. Now, do I think your spouse or partner or kids have to be like super amped up, excited for you? No, I know that sometimes you have to prove it to them to show them that you're serious, to show them that this isn't just another like MLM that you're joining, not to knock those, but I know a lot of us have started those and failed. Um, And just to show them that this is something you're serious about and you're going to make it work. And so you may have to prove that to them, but I think it's definitely important to talk to your spouse, talk to your partner, talk to your family about what's going to be happening. I'm going to be getting up really early and working on this. So I might be a little groggy when you guys get up and I'm going to need help in the morning. Or I really need to work on this for two hours on the weekends. Could you watch the kids while I do that? That kind of stuff. You need to have a plan. They need to be on board, at least in that they know you're doing it and will support you even if they don't fully agree with what you're doing or support that it will be successful, but they will at least support you trying it, if that makes sense. Number eight, don't start too much too soon. And I am preaching to myself here because I am the queen of trying to do a bazillion things at one time. Let's start a podcast. Let's do a YouTube channel. Let's grow on Instagram. Oh, let's take a course on this. Oh, let's get really good at Pinterest. Like, let's do all the things. That's a horrible idea. So learn from me. The best thing to do is just start with one thing and go deep down that path. Don't spread yourself too thin doing too much because you're going to burn out, you're going to fail, and you're not going to be good at anything. It's best to pick that one thing, whatever is really on your heart. Let's say you want to start an online brand, but you are really passionate about Instagram. Start with that. You don't need a YouTube channel and a Facebook and a Pinterest and a TikTok and be doing all the things. Yes, that may seem like something that a lot of people are doing, but very few people are successful trying to do that all at once. They get really good at doing the one thing and then they find time or they hire help or they really streamline their days and figure out a way to add something else. Very rarely do you try all of the things at once and become really good at them. And plus, it's very hard to learn about all those different platforms at the same time. Now, you may start an Etsy shop and an Instagram at the same time to help grow and grow your Etsy shop and funnel people over there. But that makes sense. But you don't want to start like 10 different things at once. It's best to start small and grow over time. And so dig deep on whatever it is that's really on your heart that you're really thinking about starting and you can add the other things as time goes on. Number nine, do invest in training. I think this is so important. And I've heard this a bazillion times. And I always roll my eyes when people say this, like it's worth investing into yourself and, 
you know, you spend this much money on coffee every year. Why don't you put that towards training? But it's so true. I have taken many, many online courses over the years and they truly have helped me. There are so many amazing people who share what they have learned. Does it come with a cost? Of course, but it's going to help you get there faster. But make sure you really research the people that you are paying money to to help learn because there are so many out there. Just be careful because some people may not actually offer a lot, but pay, you know, you have to pay a lot. So really research the person. If they have a podcast, listen to their podcast for a while, hear their coaching calls and things like that before you invest in them, get to know their platform, see if they've actually had people successful who have taken their platform and buy from people that you really feel energized from who you feel like you can connect with. Cause I just think you get so much more out of it. If you feel like you have this connection to them, um, there are amazing people online. I, you know, I'm not going to give recommendations because they're for so many different industries, but just really do your research. But I think it's so important to invest in training. Can you find out all this stuff on your own? Yes, but it can take a long time. You're going to hear mixed messages. Maybe what worked for one person, doesn't work for another. And so they're giving both of giving you advice, but they kind of conflict and you don't know which one to do. There's really no perfect path, but if you can learn from somebody who's done it before and get real tips and even, you know, if you pay more money, you can get actual like one-on-one access to the person and they can help you with your specific needs. It can be so helpful when starting a journey, especially when you don't know a lot and there's so much information out there that you don't even know where to begin. Number 10, do make friends. I know this whole side hustle thing, often the people in your life, if they're, you know, living a normal, like middle class life, they will probably have an employer, 401k benefits, stuff like that. And they'll look at you like, what are you doing growing a side hustle? Who do you think you are? Or uh, isn't that just some pyramid scheme or I don't know. That's pretty saturated. Can you actually be successful at that? It can be so hard to share with our loved ones. Sometimes it's embarrassing. It's still hard for me to share what I do. I usually don't share with people. They kind of find out on their own, which is its own unique experience. But I think it's really important to have people that you can go to who understand. So that may not be your circle of friends or your family. Maybe it will be. Maybe you have some people in your circle who have grown a side hustle or a business of some sort that you can talk to. And that's great if you have those people. Definitely reach out. Those relationships are so important. But if you don't, it's really awesome in today's world where we can find them online. Maybe you already have friends that you've connected with online that you can talk to. Maybe you can join a Facebook group. Maybe one of those people that's selling a course or training on the topic have a Facebook group that you can join and really ask questions there and get to know people. I think Instagram is a great place to learn about people and meet people. I have a lot of friends that I've made through Instagram that I talk to a lot through there and I think you can learn and really grow with somebody. Maybe they're starting a business very similar to yours and you can reach out and say, could we start a mastermind together? Or would you like to be a partner with me or, you know, and and grow together, not a business partner necessarily, but like a partner who we support each other. We check in about our business goals and we cheer each other on. I think that's so crucial. And so many more people are looking for that than you really think. So it's perfect to be vulnerable and reach out to people. Will everybody jump on board? Of course not. But if you put yourself out there, at least it could work out. If you never put yourself out there, it's never going to work out. So make some friends in unique ways and have fun learning from others and cheering for them and teaching them as well. Number 11, do not buy the latest and greatest. I am just like you. I want to buy the best camera, the best microphone, the best lighting, the best website, the best branding. Like I would love to spend tons of money on that, but it's not that important. Even if you're starting a YouTube channel, you don't need to buy the latest and greatest camera. Will it help? Yeah, but your content and your personality are way more important than your camera. This microphone I'm using was pretty cheap. It's not the best of the best, but it does a darn good job. And especially with technology these days, we've come so far. Even pretty inexpensive things can do a really good job. So definitely don't think you need to invest in the latest and greatest as far as branding goes. Start with making your own logo on Canva or PicMonkey or hire somebody on Fiverr. It doesn't have to be perfect. I didn't even pay for branding until last year. And 
That was because I was ready to, but you may not even know where your brand or business is going quite yet. So it's probably not the best idea to invest in a lot of money because you might pivot and switch directions. So you probably don't want to spend a lot of money up front because it might be a waste. Really get into it. See what you like. See what's working. See what you're wanting to do before you invest a lot and start making money before you invest in your business, especially online. Unless you're selling physical products of some sort, usually there's not a lot of overhead. And so it's best to start as cheaply as possible. Invest in training more than anything And then invest in your software and all that kind of stuff later on once you've started making some money. Number 12, I talked about Instagram, but I think it's a really good idea to get off of social media. When you are starting something, it is so easy to compare to everybody else. You're going to see all these people crushing it. And maybe they're not actually crushing it in real life. They just appear to be crushing it. You really don't know. And it's so easy to be like, okay... I already suck. There's no way I'm going to get to that level. There's no way people are going to like me as much as her. There's no way people are going to buy from me when they have products that are very similar to what I'm going to be selling. I know my message is different, but yada, yada, yada. It's so easy to compare and just want to quit because you feel like what you have to say is pretty much what somebody else is saying or what you want to sell is what somebody else is selling to some degree. And while, yes, I think it's good to know what other people are selling, know that you're your own unique person. What you want to do is different because you're different. Should you ever copy somebody and sell the exact same thing and just copy it and sell it? Of course not. You need to make it unique. Don't copy, come up with your own ideas. But chances are, if you're going to create something, whether it be a personal brand, a product, a service, somebody else is out there doing something very similar, but they're not you. And so the more you can get away from social media, like hint, I'm actually thinking about just quitting because social media, because it's just, it's such a, it's so hard with the mindset work I've done. It's so hard to turn that off and to stop those negative thoughts when you're just scrolling and it's created to make you keep scrolling. And a lot of the scroll is because you're in this self doubt and you're trying to prove to yourself you can do it. But then you see all these people who are doing better than you. And it's so hard to want to keep going then. So just shut it off. You can. You have permission. You don't have to have social media to be a successful business. You really don't. And maybe you will add it eventually. Or maybe you will have boundaries around it where you're only on it for this amount of time to post and then you get off. Or maybe you just unfollow pretty much everybody. Um, But I just think it's so important to rid yourself of as much comparison as possible. When people were starting businesses a hundred years ago, they didn't have it shoved in their face every second that everybody else was doing better than them. We have it a lot different these days. And so I think you need to really guard your mind of those toxic thoughts of the comparisonitis and things like that of the imposter syndrome that's sure to come when you're seeing all these other people killing it in your industry. So just stay away if you really need to. And I think that's totally okay. 13, do set boundaries with your mind, your thoughts, your family, your friends, your time. You need to set boundaries. If you want to be successful with a side hustle, especially you're going to need boundaries. You're going to need boundaries with your time of when you will be working and when you won't, when you'll be available for your family, when you'll be available for self-care, stuff like that for your own normal job that you have if you're already working. You need to have boundaries with your family of, okay, I am not going to go to this function because I'm going to be working or I'm not going to do supper and baths and bed on these nights. My spouse is going to be doing that because I'm going to be working. Um, Or boundaries with yourself of I'm going to be done working at this time every day so I can give my undivided attention to my family and I'm not going to let my side hustle overtake my life. You need to have boundaries. Same with like social media. Like I was saying, you're going to have boundaries of when you're going to look at it or how often or how many people you will follow or the kinds of people you will follow. Boundaries are so healthy. And I think it's so important, especially starting a side hustle to have lots of boundaries. You may need to even write them down hold yourself accountable, delete the apps, set up an alarm that goes off at 5 p.m. every day so you know to focus on your family, turn off your phone, like whatever you can physically do of some sort, 
the better. Instead of just having to try to remember the boundaries, the more you can actually set reminders or have something go off or turn something off, the better because it will hold you more accountable and it'll be harder to break the boundary wall, which you don't want to because you set them for a reason. And lastly, do expect failure. It's inevitable. It's it's going to happen. And I know that can be really hard, especially if you're a perfectionist like I am. But it's going to happen. Your ideas are going to flop. People are going to take a lot longer to follow you. Your launch isn't going to go well. You're not going to order enough of something and you're going to run out. People will get angry with you. People aren't going to like you. Okay. These are all negative things. Of course, the flip side There will be people who love you and you're going to rock that next launch and tons of people will follow you. You know, there's there's a good and the bad, but it's so easy for us to latch on to that negative. So just know it's coming. There are going to be setbacks. There are going to be failures, quote unquote, because we all know failures also give you strength. They help you learn things. They teach you things and they are important learning experience. But know they're going to happen and don't use those as a gauge of whether you're successful. You know why I believe I'm successful, even though I don't make a ton of money, even though I don't have a bazillion followers, even though I don't have amazing brands reaching out to me all the time. I believe I'm successful because I'm still here. That's why I'm successful. The successful businesses are the ones that stick around even when they're failing, even when they don't know what they're doing, even when people tell them that they're horrible and their products suck and their customer service sucks, they pivot, they figure things out, they keep going. They don't listen to that. If you listen to that, you will fail. And you know why you will fail? Because you will quit. That is true failure is quitting. So you will fail in that you will make mistakes. You will have things that don't work. But the only true failure is if you give up. And I have decided to never give up. That's one thing that has stuck with me. I've wanted to quit. I've wanted to watch TV and not have an online presence and not have people that don't like me and saying things behind my back. Like, yes, that sounds very appealing. But my why, going back to number one, is so big that it keeps me going. And I have promised and vowed to myself that I will never give up. And for that reason, I am successful. So if you want to be successful too, you have to stay committed. You have to know you're going to mess up. You're going to know you're going to fail, but the only true failure will be completely giving up. So if you really want to make this work, you have to promise yourself that you will not give up. You will keep going. You will do whatever it takes, even if it means rebranding or changing, but you will not stop. If that scares you, that's okay. It scares me. If it scares you so much you don't want to do it, then maybe you're not cut out for this. And that's okay. Not everybody needs to have a side hustle. Not everybody needs to go down that path. There's nobody is better than somebody else just because they're an entrepreneur, just because they have a successful side hustle. You definitely don't have to do this. So I don't want you to feel like I am a horrible person if I just turn this podcast off and decide this isn't for me. No, that's a great choice. If you really don't think you have what it takes or you really don't think you want to keep going no matter what, then it's best just to not even try because you're going to be wasting your time because we all get to that point in business where we're like, oh, is this really worth it? And then you go back to your why and the people you've helped and things like that. And if it's not worth it to you, then just don't even do it. You know, you have one life to live. Maybe your purpose is something else and that is okay. We shouldn't all have the same purpose because life would be boring and we need people that do all different kinds of things in this life. And maybe you're still figuring yours out and that's okay. But maybe yours is to start the side hustle and start this and make it grow. And maybe your heart's on fire. You're a little nervous listening to this, but your heart is on fire and you know this is what you're supposed to do. Listen to that. Go take some action. Talk to your partner, your family, get the ball rolling and follow these tips. And trust me, if you just stay committed, you will be successful. Thank you guys for listening. I hope that was the encouragement you needed to either go after it or go after something else. And that's okay. I'm going to end it here. Thank you for listening. This was what I needed to get off my chest. Apparently I'm very passionate about this. So thank you guys for listening. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the podcast. If you're on a podcast app or you can subscribe to my YouTube channel, let me know if you guys want more 
episodes like this, I can keep going. This is such a huge passion of mine. So thank you. Go get something done. Go love on your kids. Go live your dreams. I'll talk to you soon.